girl life. One of the names that kept popping up was Kardashian. The rumors were that between 2009 and 2013, Kim Kardashian attended multiple parties in nightclubs and on yachts with now Malaysian fugitive Joe Lo. From being paid $50,000 when she first met him to be at his club for just two hours to a multi-year relationship where Kim would meet with her client, perform her tasks, and leave with bags of cash. In 2013, Joe- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So we gonna have to bring that back. What up, what up, what up, YouTube? What up, what up, what up, YouTube? You click the title, you read the page. Celebrities and their spending. And their bad celebrity yachting habits. Listen, um, shout out to Moon. Are right, you gonna go to 7,000 subscribers? Subscribe for the vibe. Shout out, Moon, man. This guy is the GOAT. Behind the obsession with billionaires and mega yachts. What is the reason behind the obsession with billionaires and mega yachts? Is it just the most extreme status symbol possible, or is there something else behind it? Well, undercover investigations and witness testimony have revealed countless dark and depraved stories from these floating paradises, out in the open ocean beyond the reach of laws on decency. Anything is possible with the mega rich, and it's about time we dive in. To the and you see, and that was Diddy's problem. Y'all see what's going on with Diddy? Stuff like this. These celebrities always want more and more and more, and that's how you end up in them goddamn freak offs. Mm -mm. Sick and twisted world of super yachts and find out what's really going on behind their closed doors. The term Yacht Girls first became popular in 2013, particularly in relation to the Cannes Film Festival. And we'll get to that in a moment. But where this all started goes back to when Grace Kelly married the Prince of Monaco in 1956. You see, it's always been a thing among the ultra rich who love to play a game of cat and mouse, especially when it comes to gifts and showing off their wealth. If one guy builds a skyscraper, another needs to reach a new height. If one owns a new Mercedes, another will get a new Ferrari and the list just goes on. This obviously leads to many toxic traits. And when money is never an issue, it has no limit. So when Grace Kelly, an actress seen as one of the most beautiful women in the 1950s married a prince, all of a sudden, it opened a can of worms. The ultra-rich started competing on who had the best trophy wife, or who had the most beautiful girls around them. I'm screaming, not the best trophy wife. Yo, but I heard that term in forever. At all stages. Throwing the best parties is one of the many ways the rich princes and sultans will show off their wealth. Simply owning a yacht and heading out to sea is just boring, so they've simply filled them with some of the most beautiful ladies they could find. In 2015, Saudi Arabia's party prince Mohammed bin Salman has over 150 women flown in from Brazil, Russia, and elsewhere to party on his $500 million super yacht and his private island in the Maldives with just a few dozen men from the Middle East. Going all out, the prince hired big names from around the world, including Pitbull, Gangnam Style Psy, DJ Afrojack, Jennifer Lopez, and Shakira to perform. But what do a few dozen men do with over 150 women on a yacht? I mean, they were clearly shipped in for a purpose, and some of the models made a good amount of money for the work they did. Well, fast forward to the Cannes Film Festival, and this semi-secretive business was exposed to the world, because one of the many ways these billionaires arrive at Cannes is by luxurious yachts, often anchored off the French Riviera. Every year, there would be at least 30 years yachts belonging to or rented by billionaires. Some include Jeff Bezos, Epstein, Mohammed bin Salman, but most of the yachts belong to some unknown. Mm, I bet you sure, I'm pretty sure Jeffrey ass was on these goddamn yachts, his sick ass. Wealthy individuals, the type of guys that run a secretive oil business, or the people just pulling the strings in the media, the black rocks of the world. And this was when a Hollywood reporter noticed that the festival was filled with yacht parties that didn't seem overly logical. A-list actors would attend parties and hang around unknown figures who either rented or owned these yachts. And if it wasn't actors, it was some well-known models. Kendall Jenner, Kourtney Kardashian, Victoria Silvitz, Lindsay Lohan, Emily Ratajkowski, and several others were photographed at these unusual yacht parties. Well, after a lengthy investigation, the Hollywood Reporter found that some of the actors were paid up to $40,000 just to join the party for the night, but they weren't paid just to sit there and do nothing. I was about to say $40,000 just to sit there. Nothing. These actors and models were paid to board a yacht and make an enjoyable time for some ultra wealthy clients. However, unsurprisingly, many of the women would receive an incentive to do more. They'd be tipped based on their services. And you can only imagine some of the fantasies these guys have. One man named Eli Nahas played a major part in supplying the York girls during the Cannes Film Festival. As a business, he ran a successful modeling agency and was pimping out his models. According to Eli himself, his models knew they were expected to perform favors for the yacht owners or guests, and were then compensated with envelopes of- What? So you was getting a yacht? And you was literally getting a boatload of them hoes? So the yacht come with a boatload of them hoes? Like, you know when you watching TV and they be like, yo, a boatload of them hoes? Celebrities really be having a boatload of them hoes. 
I thought that was just a terminology. Whole time they really got a boatload of them hoes. <laughs> Money based on the celebrity status and the nature of the favors performed. Quote, women installed on yachts in Cannes during the film festival are called yacht girls, and the line between professional prostitutes and BOC list Hollywood actresses and models who accept payment for sex with rich older men is sometimes very blurred. If they did a good job, they'd get paid very well, have the opportunity to join in on more parties, go to some private islands, and be in contact with some of the most powerful men in the world who can make anything they need happen. But despite exposing what was going on in the yacht industry, it didn't make things slow down at all. In fact, it's probably only open doors to those realizing what's happening in the industry and making themselves more available as yacht girls. And recruiting women as yacht girls can sometimes just be very simple. A little message on Instagram, a little bribe at parties, or just through a modeling agency. Quote, I was on a work vacation in South Beach, Miami years ago when I modeled. My friends and I were partying in an exclusive club on the rooftop of a luxurious hotel. This older but extravagant woman approached my friends and me individually to invite us on a yacht trip. At first, she played it off as a VIP party with very influential people in the industry. But when we weren't interested, she got very aggressive and said that doing what all pretty girls do, we were very ungrateful. She had a Russian accent and said her boss would pay a lot. Luckily, we knew that this happens all too often, especially in the luxurious South Florida places to recruit for yachting. Another young woman living in Miami claimed to have been offered the quote opportunity to go on these yachts and she and her friend were well aware of what happens during these yacht parties. I have known bartenders who saw 14 to 17 year olds on yachts with their clients who were 60 and had to quit the next day because they couldn't stand to see it. I got offered plenty of times to go out on a boat and I always refused because you have to realize who is going to come get you. There's no can I call someone on the water. There is nowhere to hide and worst case if you fall over the ship and everyone else is too drunk to notice then you can get hurt oh hell no yo 31 years old i ain't never been on no cruise and i don't plan on nah and i just found out the other day that pirates are real i'm lying not the other day the other like seven years ago yeah the other seven years ago pirates are real bro like it's not no on some her mate motherfucking like how i be in, in pirates of the caribbean no these niggas are really hold the goddamn Yo, cruise ship hostage and take all your shit. It like, mm -mm. be careful on them cruises, yo, cause pirates are real. Go look at um Captain Phillips. Bet you, y'all gonna come back to this shit like yo, TZ. That shit was crazy. It's not fun unless you know the people hosting and you know exactly what is going on on the boats. I know someone personally who worked a twelve dollar an hour retail job but could somehow afford a four k a month place in the middle of the city. And although the yacht girl parties may be voluntary for most, they still paint a really sad picture of the world we live in, and the lengths the women will go to make their money in today's economy. But this is just the surface level. As one assistant for a French yacht management firm explained, it's far worse than just minor prostitution. Quote, every year during popular events, I have doctors and nurses on standby, with at least 12 helicopter pilots on 24-7 cool because of drugs and accidents. Once a doc had to get an expensive watch out of a woman's vagina surgically, what? Why was a watch inside? First of all, if I could do that, shorty, I don't want you. Go over there. If this whole shit could fit, I don't want you. Go over there. What? A bet gone wrong. They somehow stuck it too high. Another was a famous married actress who almost died of an overdose yachting. In fact, our entire office had signed NDAs. Several foreign girls go missing every year, but our office is not accountable for persons visiting, only those renting. We get investigators at least once a month looking for missing people. St. Mullen, a minor London influencer, shared a video on how she was offered £20,000 to join a yacht party in Dubai. Documenting all the messages, Mulan revealed how she was being recruited by a prince who was worth £321 million. The agent actually offered Mulan to bring all of her friends with her, and they would also get paid. But um, I said, can my friends come? <laughs> and I was playing along, I said, beautiful friends, because he called me beautiful. And he's like, of course, thank you for accepting. Explaining that the prince loves to party with beautiful women, he finds you very attractive attractive and he loves to spoil women. Obviously, this is a really creepy message. Suspicious about the offer, Mulan asks more questions. With the agent writing back, you will not spend a single dollar when you come to Dubai, but there is something we need to ask of you. The prince, as well as myself, have fetishes and we just need them pleased in return for everything. First of all, ladies, okay? Ain't no man in their right mind gonna offer you a whole bunch of stuff for nothing. I tell you what, I make you feel a little more 
suckish in a sense. I know it sucks. I, yeah, I, I, I'm a female. I get it. No one's in the world gonna just offer you a whole bunch of stuff for nothing. Super sucks. Super sucks. I know. You gotta know when you're being looked at like a piece of meat. You have to know. Okay. How do you know? I don't know. I know it sucks. I really don't know. But there's signs. Look how he talking. Y'all, I'm going to give you all of this. For what? For what? That's one of the signs. I can list them now for you. By this point, I'm thinking, are you dumb? Because what do you mean? I don't even know majority of these. what these things mean. What do you mean? On the side of nails. What does that urophilia? Anal feet? What? Anal feet? What? It, everything just sounds just disgusting. This really grim and disgusting stuff makes it even less surprising that the Human Trafficking Foundation has earmarked the Yoko industry as a human trafficking hotspot. And circling back to the Cannes Investigation article, and the Human Trafficking Foundation declared that, quote, conversations are finally starting to be had about the fact that sexual abuse and exploitation are endemic in society. And the information published around the sexual exploitation of young women and girls in Cannes is probably only the tip of the iceberg of what's happening there. And they're correct. Girls who try the Yoko life often do not fully understand what they're getting into and who these people truly are on these boats. The psychopathic people running our country aren't just normal people with normal fetishes. They're not just having normal parties. It's commonly known that these people request tasks like being peed on, taking a dump on someone, giving these girls a bunch of diseases and lifelong trauma. And yes, some don't even make it through the weekend. But the Cannes Festival is also just the tip of the iceberg because soon after the Cannes Festival Exposed article came out, it led others to do deeper investigations. And people didn't need to dig deep to find at how much the celebrity industry played a role in the young girl life. One of the names that kept popping up was Kardashian. This might not be too surprising for some, as the family is popular for selling their bodies online, exposing mm -hmm. every aspect of their lives. But the rumors were that between 2009 and 2013, Kim Kardashian attended multiple parties in nightclubs and on yachts with now Malaysian fugitive Joe Lowe. From being paid $50,000 when she first met him to be at this club for just two hours to a multi-year relationship where Kim would meet with her client, perform her tasks, and leave with bags of cash. In 2013, Joe- Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, we knew Kim Kardashian and Ray J. And I, to be honest, I didn't judge her for that shit. I didn't, everybody got a sex tape now. I mean, I, they was there. I didn't judge her for that. I had no judgments here. But I didn't know she was doing all of this. So we're going to have to bring that back. Because that went over my head a little bit. Okay. What they're getting into and who these people truly are on these boats. The psychopathic people running our country aren't just normal people with normal fetishes. They're not just having normal parties. It's commonly known that these people request tasks like being peed on, taking a dump on someone, giving these girls a bunch of diseases and lifelong trauma. And yes, some don't even make it through the weekend. But the Cannes Festival is also just the tip of the iceberg because soon after the Cannes Festival Exposed article came out, it led others to do deeper investigations. And people didn't need to dig deep to find out how much the celebrity industry played a in the young girl life. One of the names that kept popping up was Kardashian. This might not be too surprising for some, as the family is popular for selling their bodies online, exposing every aspect of their lives. But the rumors were that between 2009 and 2013, Kim Kardashian attended multiple parties in nightclubs and on yachts with now Malaysian fugitive Joe Lowe. From being paid $50,000 when she first met him to be at this club, for just two hours to a multi-year relationship where Kim would meet with her client, perform her tasks, and leave with bags of cash. Yo, what's her task? What was her task? What was her task? In 2013, Jolo tipped Kim with a white Ferrari and $250,000 after spending a single night with her. The Ew, Kim let that nigga hop on top of her? Allegedly? Ew. Now I'm judging. Like... The evidence of these celebrities goes on and on. Lindsay Lohan, Cara Delvin, and even Meghan Markle were spotted on You Know Who's yacht alongside Prince Andrew. Yachting at the Cannes Film Festival is well documented. Many young women are paid hefty sums to attend exclusive parties on luxury yachts. However, the narrative surrounding celebrities' involvement in yachting remains largely speculative. Emily Ratajkowski's memoir is possibly the only true evidence towards celebrity yacht girls. But beyond that, there's hardly any public admissions from celebrities about participating in these yacht parties for career gains or other reasons. After all, for most celebrities, it 
it would be a PR nightmare to make such an admission. Some of Vice's best work to date has been their Informer series, and of those videos, one of the most illuminating is their interview with someone who worked as a deckhand on a super yacht. He describes a working environment from hell, where workers are completely at the mercy of the powerful owners, forced to clean up after their drug binges and sex parties. No luxury is too extravagant, and nothing is off limits. Every single desire the Ew, sex parties? That's them freak offs, yo. These, these celebrities, they get so rich, they don't know what to do. And, and they out here just getting it in every day, and they get bored, and then that's how they start unleashing, unleashing all these weird-ass fantasies, bro. Because don't, don't get me wrong, we all got fantasies. But our fantasies have limits. Maybe it's because we're broke. Maybe it's because we're sane. Who knows? But our fantasies got limits. These celebrities' fantasies go beyond me. Beyond me. <laughs> beyond. The rich and powerful might have is catered for, however disgusting it might be. The reality of it is that you are clearing up rooms that have just had sex parties, orgies, prostitutes, coke residue on the tables the next day, veal or livestock so fresh that it actually gets flown in on a helicopter, it's slaughtered on board and served to the guest as fresh as can be. The crew on the other hand work day in and day out, dealing with abuse from men and women that are untouchable by laws. It's an accurate microcosm of the world at large really. It's an interview that's well worth watching of course, but the comments below the video show how deep it really goes. Tons of people are sharing their experiences on these monoliths to materialism. One person who says they worked on one of these yachts describes the billionaire owner flirting with the girls, then leaning in to smell their seat after they left. Others describe the awful conditions on these boats. Billionaires and their cronies stay up all night partying, with the crew on call 24-7 to start cleaning up once the festivities come to an end. It's frustrating though, because you know it's just a small glimpse into what's really going on. There's such a dense and pervasive culture of silence that barely anyone ever talks about it. The consequences are too harsh. Making such powerful enemies would only invite in retribution and revenge. The people in power don't want anyone to know what's going on, and we will only ever get small snippets and leaks from that decrepit world. But what do these super yachts actually look like? The Ocean Victory is a prime example. At 140 meters long, it's one of the largest super yachts around. For an estimated value of $300 million, it's got all the luxuries you could ever expect. Nigga, that boat costs more than all of us put together. How much we got? I said we got about to 7,000 subscribers. That shit costs more than all 6,000 of us. <laughs> like what? And more. Seven separate. I'm being funny. Your life is not worth a price. That was a joke, okay? For real. Decks, six swimming pools, a glass bottom observation room, its own spa, and even a helipad to store the helicopter in. And it's owned by the Russian billionaire Viktor Rashnikov, a member of Putin's inner circle, and a steel magnet worth over $10 billion. But whilst the boat is obviously a symbol of decadence and absurd wealth, it also symbolizes something else the complete disregard that lots of these billionaires have for the safety and dignity of their workers. The Ocean Victory is the yacht that the man in the Vice interview is actually talking about when he mentions a horrific story he heard. In 2016, just two years after being launched for the first time, a tragedy happened on board. As the ship was laying anchor off Thailand, part of the mechanism was shattered under the strain of the anchor, and suddenly massive amounts of tension were let loose, and the anchor chain shot across the deck and struck one of the workers. It wrapped what in the Titanic? around his legs, nearly severing him, and he quickly fell unconscious due to blood loss, and on the way to hospital, he tragically passed away. Articles reporting on this tragedy, though, are really strange. They all refer to it as an accident, which while technically true ignores the obvious problem. How did such a crucial bit of machinery fail in such a catastrophic way and so early on in the yacht's life? The answer can only be callousness and cost cutting on the part of the designers and the owner. It's doubtful that the billionaire who owns it ever went near the mechanical underbelly of the ship, so why would he care if it's dangerous or not? But you can also imagine that all the swimming pools were constantly heated and the elevating helipad never stopped working. Nothing that he would touch would ever be bad, only the stuff the workers had to deal with would be tragically dangerous. The private nature of yacht parties combined with the influence and resources of their billionaire hosts, leads to situations where questionable activities occur far from public eye, with little chance of scrutiny or repercussions. The secrecy surrounding these events also contributes to a culture of silence and Yo, I'm done with this. I'm about to watch that Vice video. Complicity, making it incredibly challenging for victims to speak out or seek justice. Unacceptable.